Carl, let's bring in Dave Calhoun, CEO of Boeing, uh, which just reported its fourth quarter uh, results this morning, a much wider than expected loss. Dave, I think people are going to look at this, a loss of 15.25 a share. The expectation was for a loss of a buck 80 a share. I know you've got a slew of charges in there, more than $8 billion in charges, but what happened in the fourth quarter? And, and, and how do you regain the narrative uh, to investors that you do have vision in terms of where this company will be headed? Well, Phil, first, uh, good to be with you. And uh, um, I'm sure glad uh, 2020 is in the rearview mirror. Uh, but yeah, we did have to make some adjustments, uh, largely uh, accounting adjustments. Uh, but when I think about entering this year and, th and those adjustments, I, I sort of look at it uh, optimistically, not pessimistically. Why? Well, the one big charge was for the 777X program, uh, as you know. What's happened with the 777X program? We, we had to, uh, based on everything we learned in the MAX recertification effort, um, the processes, procedures that the global regulators are now going to use uh, you know, throughout the world, um, we put more time into the uh, certification schedule for the 777X. Um, and we're determined to meet every compliance requirement from every regulator in the world uh, on day one which meant that we had to incorporate a few design changes, et cetera. Um, uh, so it's going to be a little more costly. It's going to take a little longer, ultimately, to uh, certify. And then, uh, with respect to how you account for these programs, the uh, adjustments that we've had to make around demand uh, due to COVID are largely in these early years of production, which speaks to a large portion of the accounting lot that we use to value the program, which means that this this kind of adjustment ultimately was required. The good news for that is that we are determined to continue to invest in the 777X. We love the airplane. And ultimately, when it moves to satisfy a market of roughly 1,500 airplanes out there over the next 20 years, um, we think it's going to be one of the real money makers for our, for our company. So uh, like our predecessors, uh, we intend to invest in, uh, and ultimately uh, perform with this great wide body aircraft. So that was a big part of it. Another one was a tax uh, 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 asset revaluation um, that hit us. And so those are, I think, the uh, unexpected numbers that, um, you know, again, uh, they don't cloud my view of the future and or the Boeing company's view of the future. To the balance sheet for a moment, uh, if I might. Uh, Phil mentioned, of course, some of the charges that you're taking uh, this quarter. Do you have sufficient liquidity to uh, face whatever may be coming at you or at least what you expect uh, for the rest of this year? Yeah, David, I think we do. Um, so I've been, uh, first of all, it is our metric of choice between the beginning of COVID and uh, recovery. And we're nowhere near recovery yet. So that is the metric all of us are focused on to make sure that we have the liquidity we need to continue to invest in our future and, uh, uh, and to uh, take these lower production rates in hand. Um, so far, so good. In fact, I, I would suggest we, we probably feel better than we have over the course of last year. Things are beginning to remedy. Uh, 737 MAX is now uh, being delivered. Um, we have uh, a, too big an inventory in the 87 world. That will begin to deliver over the course of the year. So cash flows improve. Um, and yes, we will be in the market, but it will mostly be with respect to maturities and refinancing as opposed to additional liquidity need. So we feel pretty good. And we continue to underwrite very conservative basis. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.